يا حبيبي يا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحابه والتابعين اما بعد. Aujourd'hui nous avons l'honneur et le plaisir de recevoir parmi nous un des grands ulama de notre époque, Sayyidi Sheikh Moulana Mohamed bin Yahya al-Ninawi, un des ulama de la Syrie, un descendant de Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, de la branche de Sayyidina al-Husayn radiallahu ta'ala. Sheikh al-Ninawi, il est résident aux États-Unis, là où il prêche à Dir. Sheikh al-Ninawi, il est diplômé de l'Azhar, doctorat. Cheikh Aninawi, il a d'autres diplômes en d'autres domaines scientifiques et autres. Cheikh Aninawi, il a voyagé beaucoup dans le monde musulman et autres. Et il a des gens autour de lui, des adeptes un peu partout. Il a rencontré de très grands ulamas de notre époque et des ulamas du Maroc, de l'Égypte et d'ailleurs dans le monde. C'est un alim sunni comme nous avons envie d'en avoir. Les ulama sunni qui prêchent à din, les ulama sunni qui enseignent les préceptes de la aqida de la sunna, qui enseignent la sharia et qui ne s'arrêtent pas seulement sur le discours de ce qu'on appelle loi et sermon. C'est ce, cela dont on a besoin parce qu'aujourd'hui, quand on se proclame d'être sunni, nous avons absolument besoin que ce soit concret. Parce qu'avec l'ignorance, c'est plutôt l'ennemi de Dine, l'extrémisme, le wahhabisme qui va gagner du terrain. Parce qu'on vient parmi les milieux sunnis et on veut prêcher le sunnisme, si on ne l'enseigne pas d'une manière concrète, s'il n'y a pas derrière enseignement de charia correctement comme il se doit, eh bien, c'est l'ennemi qui va en profiter. Voilà un de ces ulamas se nie dans notre époque qui enseigne et qui prêche. Bien entendu, Alhamdulillah, il y en a, il y en a en Inde, il y en a dans les pays arabes, et lui, il vient d'un pays arabe, il vient de Moulishan, de la Syrie. Il y en a en Égypte, il y en a au Yémen, il y en a de partout, même en Arabie, il y en a. Et là où c'est quelque chose qui est beaucoup plus important, beaucoup plus encore important, c'est lorsque c'est concret, c'est de l'enseignement et non pas seulement un roi. Il est important de savoir une chose, lorsque on est en train de respecter un alim à sa juste valeur, c'est parce qu'il est alim. Et c'est parce que il est en train de prêcher l'enseignement de Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qu'on le connaisse intimement ou pas, qu'on soit de la même silsila ou non, que l'on soit de la même madrasa ou non, ce n'est pas ça qui importe. Ce qui importe, c'est ce socle commun, cette base commune qui est l'enseignement de Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Le respect des quatre madahir. L'enseignement de l'aqida tel que ça a été fait par les sahaba, tabi'in et tabi'in, tabi'in. Et c'est cela qui fait que lorsque on pose la question à un alim d'est ou d'ouest, du 3e siècle ou du 4e ou du 12e siècle, peu importe, on va retrouver le même enseignement. Et c'est ça qui fait la grande force de le sunnah ou le jama'ah. Voilà donc un chef dont nous avons le plaisir et l'honneur de recevoir et d'accueillir et bien entendu, c'est à lui que revient aujourd'hui le note de nous enseigner, de nous éclairer. Fabarakallahu fiqh. Je vous remercie de la parole 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 de
خير الهدي كتاب الله تعالى وإن خير الهدي كتاب الله تعالى بلفظ إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النعم أما بعد أيها الأحبة الأكارم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته It's my pleasure and honor to be amongst you today I don't understand much French nor do I speak it so uh, Allah bless you It's my pleasure to be uh, to meet Fadila al-Shaykh Khaled Fadila Allah Ta'ala Sayyid Amin, and everybody who I met today, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless all of you. And it is my pleasure and honor and grace to be amongst you today. Uh, in this time that we have, inshallah, I would like to say to maybe cover one of the ayahs of the Quran that come to my mind. Or the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam did say in Asdaq al-Hadith kitab Allah. And I always like to go back to the book and to the authentic sunnah. For nothing is more saving and safe. Safe and saving. Than that which comes in the book of Allah Jalla Jalaluh and in the authentic sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Anything other than that becomes he said, she said. And we're not interested in learning what he said versus the other said. We're interested to learn what Al-Quran Al-Azim is telling us and what our Rasul Al-Rahuf Al-Rahim is teaching us. Salawat Rabbi wa salamu alayhi wa alihi wa يقول ربنا سبحانه وتعالى في المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فما آمن لموسى إلا ذرية من قومك على خوف من فرعون وملئهم أن يفتنهم وإن فرعون لعال في الأرض وإنه لمن المسرفين لا يا رسول عشر جنرالي مينز الله استلنا فما آمن لموسى إلا ذرية من قومه the only people who believed in the message of Musa عليه السلام the meaning of the ayah are ذرية from his people We'll talk about what Dhuriyah may mean. But for right now, let's just take Dhuriyah, the Quranic word. Dhuriyah are those who believed in the message of Musa ala khawfin min fir'awna wa malaihim despite fear from Fir'aun and the qawm of Fir'aun, the people, society. Then Allah said, وَإِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ لَعَالٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ Fir'aun indeed seeks superiority on earth. وَإِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الْمُسْرِفِ He's among those who want to israf excess, extreme. طبعاً the story of Fir'aun and Musa repeats itself throughout the Qur'an. You see it. You leave it here, you see it in another ayah. In the middle, in the beginning, at the end. You always see that repetition of Fir'aun and Musa. In fact, the whole life, from the beginning of life almost, as we know it, until the end of life, the story of Musa and Fir'aun repeats itself amongst people. يعني بمعنى آخر, you will always have, in a different word, you will always have 
the line of Musa alayhi salam amongst people and the line of Fir'aun amongst people. Hence the Quran repeated the story in so many ways so you can identify your own Fir'auns and your own Musa. Obviously, yani life is about a struggle. If there is no struggle, it's not life. You might as well become an angel, but I'll tell the story. It's life. Yani had a sarah, this struggle between haq and baatha, between freedom and slavery, between zulm, injustice, and justice. That struggle is ongoing all the time. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, His will determined, His will takes all that earth and what's on earth and everything, etc. Al Quran Karim also expresses these two lines. Al Quran Karim. In its expression, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Fariqan fil Jannah, wa Fariqan fil Sair. A group in Jannah, and the other group is in Jahannam. Wa yada bila fil Sair. The Quran expresses these two things. There's that. There's a distinguishing here. you read about Musa, Fir'aun, it's nothing different in a sense, in a grand scheme, from Ibrahim alayhi salam al Namrud. Sayyidina Ibrahim and the Namrud. From Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam wa Bani Israel, what they did to him. From Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab. And I always say, don't think that Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab are not related in the metaphorical sense even. Jahl is always related to Lahab. Lahab means flame. But Jahl is flame. So Jahl will always take you to Jahannam. Yani Lahab, Jahl will always take you to Lahab. That's the point. Al Hussein and Yazid. Musa Quran. The stand repeats itself. Before many, many people like that. Al Quran Karim doesn't want to only diagnose the situation but also wants to give you the tools how to handle these things. How to be in the line of Musa, not to be in the line of Fir'aun. How to identify the Muhammadan line, not Abu Jahl's line. How to identify Abu Bakr's line, not Abu Lahab's line. How to be Siddiqi in your Iman. Allah. In that quest, Al Quran talks about this. فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَى إِلَّا The struggle on earth, they say, what's the point of struggle? The struggle comes or stems from the self act, the desire for self actualization of people. How so? People want to self actualize themselves. <coughs> Sometimes that the desire for self-actualization leads to extreme. How so? And in that, for example, you want to go through self-actualization, you have excessive love of the self, so you transgress on other people's rights. That's zulm. That's called tohyan or tyranny. 
ان الانسان لا يطغى الرآه استغنى once the human being feels that they have some might some power some money they tend to become tyrants they transgress the lines طبعا الاسلام doesn't tell you that you should not actualize yourself please Please actual seek your self actualization. In other words, maximize your potential. That's what you're supposed to be doing anyway. And Islam wants you to maximize your potential to the highest levels possible. Like it wants you to actualize your potential based on the line of Musa, not on the line of Pharaoh. Also, yeah, if somebody wants to somebody seeks self actualization. So they study hard, or they work hard, and they think they do. They actually reach their potential. Society reckons, recognizes that. They, they sought self-actualization in the right way. Now, another one, another example, they seek self-actualization through crime, through slander, through hate. Yeah, they force you to recognize them or reckon with them based on evil that they give, that they contribute, not based on the good that they contribute. You see, both is recognition, but one recognition because of the good and the positive they contribute, and the other ones they force you, criminals force you to reckon with them and recognize them based on the evil they contribute. They're seeking self-actualization. But back in the Quran, Kareem talks about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim qad aflah man tazakka wa dhakar asma rabbihi wa salla The success is for those who positively contribute. This deen of Islam is deen of love, deen of mercy, deen of inclusion, Deen of reaching out, not a deen of hate. The absolute sense. Anyway. فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَى إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِّنْ قَوْمِهِ عَلَى خَوْفٍ مِّنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَكِهِمْ أَنْ يَفْتِنَهُ I just put the introduction to a little bit so we have the prelude. To the eye. You know, oftentimes, we need to put ourselves in the uh, atmospheric or the atmospheres of revelation. La joa The atmospheres, before we go to the eye, let's be in the atmospheres of revelation so we know what's going on. The only people who believed in Musa are the Durriya from his people. But do you all know what happened? that Musa السلام, and some people before, some people from Bani Israel migrated to Egypt. Things happen. Why did they migrate to Egypt? But in Egypt, there are the Egyptians there. These people, they married, yani the women of Bani Israel, they married also the local Egyptians. And they were there. They were still known as the Israelites or Bani Israel in the Egyptian society. The Egyptian society was ruled by Pharaoh. Pharaoh still exists in many forms. Pharaoh as a prototype. Again, they used to call every tyrant Pharaoh. Some people, they act, again, uh, not on what I am saying, these things I'm not talking on an absolute level, yeah, not on the level of Kufa, for example. Like, some people act like a tyrant, let's say an aspect of Pharaoh, and, and there what they do. And he, outside, he is nice to people. When he goes home, he becomes like Pharaoh with his family. Not on the Kufa side, on the acting on the Vulum side. Borrowing the volume sign here, huh? so we don't want to split hairs. Or the tyranny, the Tugian side. Part. 
Anyway. Those people who, those women of Bani Israel who married the local Egyptians, they have children. Those children were, were called, some one of the Syria said, those were called the Dhurriya. So when Musa alayhi salam gave his message, those people, those young people, or those people who were the children of a Bani Israel's mother and a father who was Egyptian, those people, it seems like they, because obviously Musa is from their mother's tribe, so it seems like they went with their mother's tribe, they felt a connection through their mother to the tribe and to the prophet that came out of that tribe, Musa alayhi salam, and therefore they supported him. Some people may say, well, this is playing or harping on the ethnic, on the ethnic affiliation. Yani as if those people, because Musa is from the same tribe of their mother, they listened to him. The others did not give him the time of day to listen. But they say, but this is ethnically affiliated then. And Islam is not about ethnicity. So here, Islam is not about ethnicity, but Islam doesn't tell you, does not tell you not to be proud of your ethnicity. And Islam doesn't tell you you should not mention, for example, uh, that you are a Mauritian, for example, or you are so and so, or you are from that tribe or that tribe, and that you feel good about that tribe. And that you are, you admire your belonging to that tribe. There is no problem in that. The problem becomes if you think because you belong to this tribe, you are now intrinsically better than other people. That's the problem. The problem is not that you feel proud that you are part of this country, a citizen of that country, or a part of that tribe. Bismillah, contribute, positively contribute to it. Like, I don't think. Just because you belong to this tribe or this nation, that makes you better than other people. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atbaq. The most honorable amongst you to Allah Jalla Jalalu is the one who has more piety. Alhamdulillah, nobody has thermometers of piety. Otherwise, they would be standing and they put thermometer. How much? No iman. Unam. People also do these things anyway. They assume, people assume that they have these kinds of thermometers. The heart, only Allah knows. That you judge Allah. Anyway. Anyway. Now, those people who were the Riyah, who their mother was from Bani Israel, who their mother, mother, or their father was Egyptian. They felt this affiliation to Musa. After all, he's from the same tribe as their mother, so then they believed in him. And therefore, Bismillah Al Quran Karim speaks about that, which means we have not sent a messenger, but with the tongue of his people, from his people. Min al-Ummiin Rasulam. Or Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent to the people someone from amongst them, so they identify with him. So also, it does not bring insensitivities of ethnic insensitivities. They know him. لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent them a messenger from amongst them. Did not send the Arabs at that time a messenger from Persia or a messenger from Rome or a messenger. Huh? He sent them a messenger from amongst them with their tongue, so he speaks to them. They know who he is. The credibility factor is already there. They know everything. That also translates into accountability to you today. That you are part of a country, you are a part of a nation, you are a part of a tribe. What are you doing? Use that which Allah has given you to give that positive message to others. 
give them that message that Islam brings hope, growth, and opportunity to everybody. And Islam brings rahmah and unconditional mercy to everyone, irrespective of their background. Bring them that message. Anyway, use that ethnic factor to positively contribute. Don't use it in a negative way to think that makes you better than other people. That's the wrong way of using it. Use it to bring positive change, to implement positivity and love and hope. Anyway. Now, you can take also from this Musa illa dhurriyatun min qawme. The dhurriya that believed in Musa, if you think about it, their mother is from Bani Israel and their father is from Egypt. Why did they believe in Musa? Well, they say because it's the influence of the mother. You see, and that the Egyptian poet says, He says, the mother is like a school. If she's well prepared, then indeed you have prepared a whole nation. Huh? And she's the teacher of every man. The first teacher of every man is his mother. That's the first shift. Huh? That's the first one. Therefore, if that one is then prepared, educated, equipped, empowered to teach and to raise that child, based on the book and the authentic sunnah, then you have prepared a nation. But if you fail to prepare them, then you have failed the whole nation. Therefore, one of the poets used to say, لا عذب الله أمي إنها شربت حب النبي وغذت فيه باللبن He says, May Allah not punish my mother. The meaning of the poetry. May Allah not punish my mother for she drank, huh? drank, what did she drink? Hubban Nabi, the love of Rasulullah. Now uh, you say, what do you mean? I drink the love of Rasulullah. It depends what you're drinking. Check your drink. Drink the drink the drink of the people of Ma'rifa and the people of love, you will find wonders. Like and drink other things, then you know, you see what happens to you. Huh? And now, he says, my mother drank the love of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa ghathat mihi bil labani and she used to feed me that love along with the milk of her breast. The first one is the teacher. That teacher, ummuk, thumma ummuk, thumma ummuk, thumma ummuk. Your mother, then your mother, then your mother, then your mother, then your father. The school, the first school, and that you learn by modeling. You learn by modeling, you don't learn. And I always say, observational learning is much more impacting than instructional or verbal learning. Why do you think Sayyidah Aisha Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha umu al-mu'mineen the daughter of Sayyidina Abi Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha when she was asked about Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and she gave this genius answer and he's Sayyid Ahmad narrated it in his Muslim and you all know it when the man told her basically I mean we see how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam outside but how is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inside? Or he told her, كَيْفَ كَانَ خُلُقُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمُ How was the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as you saw him inside your home? Or how was his akhlaq sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? And she gave him this genius answer, may Allah be well pleased with her. She said, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ In other words, don't you read the Qur'an? He was a walking Qur'an. Notice, here you have embodiment. You don't have verbal, do this, do this. You have an embodiment of the book walking, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala And that's a genius answer. Anyway. 
the Durriya believed in Musa because, well, their mothers were equipped, educated. If you leave the women and you don't educate them properly, they're going to get education improperly. You either fill it the heart and the mind, you either fill it in the right information, or it will be filled in the wrong information. You choose. And if you don't occupy, say, Ibn Allah used to say, if you don't occupy yourself with haq, it will occupy you with bathing. Huh? And uh, they say in English, the idle mind is the devil's playground. The idle mind is the devil's playground. Anyway. Now, let's look at another way. فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَى إِلَّا ذُرِّيَةً The ذُرِّيَةً is not just because they are uh, ethnically related to Musa alayhi salam and not necessarily because they were educated properly by their well-educated mothers. Maybe it's ذُرِّيَةً means offspring and us offspring means youth, young people. Hmm? What do you mean young people? Young people believe. So the ayah would mean then, فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَى إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِّنْ قَوْمٍ The only people who believed in Musa were the young people from his own ethnicity. Why young people? Uh, you know, in any Pharaoni society, in a Pharaoni society, you will have two kinds of people usually around Pharaoh. Those who really believe in Pharaoh, and that's a very little circle. And those who benefit from Pharaoh, they are pro Pharaoh, because they're making money off of Pharaoh. Or they have a chair, kursi. Huh? You know, very, kursi is very important. Kursi means what? Chair. Today we fight about the kursi. All of our fights about kursi, kursi, kursi. Very nice, Maulana Habibna. To be ready for the kursi, be equipped and learn to sit on the kursi. You'll get the kursi. Even if there is no kursi for you, you will have the kursi in the hearts of people. But if you're not equipped, you can never sit on a kursi, even if you make the biggest kursi. It's not about the kursi that's, that you make. Huh? It's not about the kursi that you make. Well, Say, I mean, asked me to, yesterday to speak about al bayt but then to speak about al bayt is a long thing. But anyway, you all know, among the tyrants of our time, of the times in the old days was Yazid. It was a facet according to most of the scholars of Al-Sunnah. But anyway, so there was Yazid and there was al Hussein. Yazid was sitting on the kursi. But what happened to the kursi of Yazid? It is destroyed. Nobody really cares about it. And Hussein has a arsh in the heart of every believer that they are. <laughs> Not just the kursi. Al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa sits on a arsh in the heart of every believer. Firm arsh until the day of judgment. <laughs> Which kursi are you talking about? وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّانِ التَّقْوَى The kursi of taqwa is the one that remains. Huh? Not just the kursi of wood or the kursi of gold, or the kursi of silver. All these things have shining for the fake eyes or the blind heart. But the real shine comes the nur of Iman. That's the real kursi. Not the shining of gold. Gold and Iman, their nur cannot be even compared. The nur of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq How can it be compared to anybody else's nur? They believe, the young people believe in Musa because you see, young people are not really deeply rooted in society. What does that mean? Yeah, the young people, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, who believed in Musa, they did not have businesses, long businesses established, benefiting from Pharaoh society or Pharaoh establishment. They don't have 
they're not in political positions, so they cannot go against, you know, because then if you're a businessman, you're always calculating the PNL. PNL is profit and loss. What's the profit? What's the loss? Business. If you're a politician, it's even worse. What's the profit? What's the loss? Huh? Not all politicians. So, I'm not again. We're not against anybody. We still love all Muslims and we have unconditional compassion to everybody. Anyway, that can you always base it on what's in it for me? How can I make what 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 can I get out of this? In politics, maybe in in business, but for the young people, he's not in politics yet. He doesn't have any uh, deeply rooted uh, relation with the society. It's easy for them to rebel against society. It's not easy for the elderly to rebel because of the own establishment and now they want to rest, they don't want to bother with anything. The young people, it's very easy for them to change. Actually, young people are always looking to change. Why? They saw their parents. See, their parents grew, now they have children, their parents are a bit old. Their parents are satisfied with the status quo. Because they, their parents started here, and they worked their way up, and now they're here and they're happy. They made what they want. But their children started here, and they want to now go higher. So they're not satisfied with the status quo. They're always looking for a change. And if the older community then keeps them from changing, they're going to rebel against it. When Musa salam, came to give them hope and opportunity, they went with him. That's why I look at all movements. Good, bad, and ugly. Because there's always the good, the bad, and the ugly. All movements, where do they focus? Their focus is on the youth. Huh? Their focus is on the youth. They don't care about the rest. I'm saying that for a reason. Look at the youth amongst your community today. Where are they? That's an indicator of what our future entails. Where are you, the youth? Where are the 15s and the 16s and the 17 and the 18 year olds and the 20 year olds and the 21 and the 22 and these? Where are they? What are they doing? Are they coming and learning their deen? Are they involved in their deen? Are they spiritualized by what they're learning? Or are they just learning rituals and repeated, empty of any meaning and they don't understand what they're saying? and they don't understand what they're carrying. Are we filling them with unconditional compassion and sending them as ambassadors of Islam to themselves reforming and then reforming others? Or are we just sending them with hate and, un and, and, and lack of understanding and intolerance and a cult mentality? What are we doing with them? Are they being provided qualified people to teach them? Or we're just getting half. Because you know what happens when you get half. Half truth. Half truth, unfortunately, ends up with no truth. Hmm? And there's something we say in America. And as you know, American people have a saying. They say, cheap things ain't good. And good things ain't cheap. And in the long run, you get what you pay for. People look for the best people to educate them and to give them the understanding so they can equip this generation. We need to pay attention to our teaching in the masajid and teaching in the institutes and teaching in the Islamic universities and colleges because that's what matters most. The salah is very important, it's fun. But how what you put in your children's minds, that's very, very important. Because it will determine what kind of salah those people will be doing eventually. It's not just the ritual of the salah. It's the meaning and the mission of the salah. Those people, فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَىٰ إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةً Those people were well equipped. They were taught. Allah sent them Musa. Taught them. They believed in him. That group of young people took the message with Musa. عَلَىٰ خَوْفٍ مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِمْ مَنْ يَفْتِنَهُمْ Despite this grave fear that Pharaoh, Pharaoh was ruling by fear of people. Huh? 
making them fearful of him, but they still believed. على خوف من فرعون وملائهم أن يفتنهم. يفتنهم هي الفتنة doesn't mean confusion. I know we think fitna means confusion or chaos. Fitna means trial. Huh? Trial. Here. Yani those people believed, believed in Musa despite their fear from trial. Because you see, why trial? Because Pharaoh is not going to just let them go. He's going to subjugate them. He's going to try to kill them. He's going to try to burn them. He's going to try to destroy them. He's going to try to slander them. He's going to try to do everything against them to stop them from believing. Remember what happened to the magicians when Pharaoh gathered them? Magicians. Who those magicians, they, they know. Who Pharaoh went says, يَأْتُونِ بِكُلِّ سَحَّارٍ عَنِي Not just سَحَّر, سَحَّر. يعني مُلَبْ مُبَالَغَ. سِحَّر. سَحَّر, سَحَّر. The people who are experts in magic. Not just experts, authorities in magic. Bring them all to me. I want to overcome Musa. So they went in the land and they brought, they brought uh, for all the experts, the authorities in magic. They know everything about magic. They threw their things, huh? snakes and all these things. Musa threw his cane bi Allah Ta'ala. So when Musa alayhi cane turned into a snake, ate all their things. Those people are experts in magic. They know the extent of the science. When they saw what Musa said and put, they knew 100% yaqeen that this is not magic. They know everything about magic. They went to sujood. Amanna bi Musa Musa They know? Nobody would know. They know. That's why they said, Amanna. We believe in the Lord of Musa wa Harun. This cannot be a creation thing. This must be something from the Creator, huh? But for all told them, God, do we know about another level? You believe in him before I allow you? He even wants to. You cannot even speak. You not only speak, you can't even believe before for all gives you hijab. For hijab, you can actually. He says, I will, which means I will crucify you. I will cut your hands and I will cut your legs and I will cut your nose. I will do all these things to you. It's not easy. Don't think it's easy. Now, because we're sitting talking theory, talk is cheap. Huh? But like when you're put into trial, and when people fight you with your money, and fight you with your risk, and fight you with your job, and, and all these things, it's not easy. Don't ask Allah to, to, to go through trials. Trials are not easy. May Allah save us. People's iman may shake with trials. Anyway, they still believed in Him. Allah said, let me finish because I took more than I'm supposed to. Allah said, وَإِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ لَعَالٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِنَّهُ لَا مِنَ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Pharaoh seeks superiority on earth. As if this is not a good thing. يعني هذا مفتعل. It's not real. He's not really superior. He just seeks superiority. Remember those people who want to seek recognition of people. Some people by positive contribution. Some people by negative contribution. It seems as Pharaoh is not seeking superiority by servitude and being good. Pharaoh is seeking superiority by fate, by criminality, by evil, by spreading hate, by spreading this intolerance, by spreading this, this, this evil. That's how he's seeking superiority. Why? Because Allah said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Tilka darul akhirah naj'adu. لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًّا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا وَالْعَقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This the meaning of the ayah, الدار الآخرة, the آخرة, the meaning of the ayah, and we leave it, تلك الدار الآخرة نجعلها, we will grant الدار الآخرة to those who do not seek عُلُوًّا فِي الْأَرْضِ They do not seek superiority on earth. وَلَا فَسَادًا and they don't seek corruption on earth. They don't seek to spread evil on earth. Well, aqibah, and the aqibah, the end result is for who? The muttaqeen. Therefore, Allah says, وَإِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ لَعَالِ فِي الْأَرْضِ Then Allah said, وَإِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الْمُسْرِفِينَ He is among those who are extreme. Excess. Allah does not like those who go to extreme. 
وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا it's israf it's fear so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who do not go to extreme and those who are follow the line of Musa alayhi salam or the line of Isa alayhi salam and the line of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alam